<laughs> go. <laughs> go. Let me just start this episode out with a with a goat call. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even do it. <laughs> that is wrong. It is <laughs> really wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Oscar, now you got it. Oh my God. Let's start this out episode with a voicemail. Let's do this. Hi guys, Jim White. I've just recently purchased a 2006 Springer soft tail and I hate the handlebars. They're a drag bar style and there is absolutely no information on how to replace these or what to do. If yes, there is, please, Jim. Please uh, send me info or a video on handlebar replacement for a stock Springer. I'd appreciate it. Thanks. So some of our most popular videos are our handlebar install videos. We've got four different videos. It doesn't matter, guys. And uh, I get it. I get why Jim's asking that. Some guys are just confused. So we're not uh, definitely Jim White. Thank you for sending the voicemail. And uh, we appreciate that. So uh, it doesn't matter, guys. Our four videos are going to have you covered. Here's the deal. Handlebar installs are very universal for the most part. We have one with a fairing, one without a fairing. Um, we have a Dyna. We have a soft tail. One of those four videos is going to fit your needs. And in your case, you would want to get the soft tail video because you've got a soft tail springer. It but, doesn't... Yeah, go ahead. What year is the soft tail video? Uh, oh, it doesn't matter what year. Well, yeah, because if it's not throttle by wire, the only thing different would be... But, no, but that's the thing. We show that. Oh, throttle cables. We show you whether oh, it's yeah, throttle. That, that's what I'm saying. That's no, a good question, Oscar. Yeah, right. No, I th thanks for bringing that up. That's the thing, guys. You get lots of video files with our videos. You're going to get it. It doesn't matter. They're so We've made them so packaged, so universal, that it doesn't matter if you have cable clutch or hydraulic clutch or you have throttle cable or if you have cable throttle. We have enough video files in there that will show you how to do it. And that's what I'm getting at is they're universal. It doesn't have to be a 2006. It can be a 2005 or a 2004 or a 2013. It's the same processes and the same techniques, guys. Our videos, we have so, we've done them for so much time that it's going to get you through it. We get nothing but rave reviews. And I, again, I'm not making fun at all. Um, thanks for the voicemail. And we get a lot of those type of voicemails. And I tell the same thing that I'm telling on this podcast. The videos will give you everything you need. I don't care what year it is. We got your back all the way, at least probably 95. We say just to be safe, 2000 and on. But even before that, the techniques haven't changed that much. And, uh, I mean, a 1937. Correct. Maybe. Yeah, that we might be not be able to different. cover that yes. one, but the rest will be fine. Yes, thank you. <laughs> and so good question though, Oscar. And so yes, they're universal. Lawbindingbiker.com forward slash Harley Handlebars, how you get to the page where we have all four of our videos. Pick the one that is for your bike, whether it's a touring with fairing, touring without fairing, soft tail or Dyna. And uh, I'm telling you, you're going to save yourself up to at least fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars, and not having to have the uh, dealership do that for you. So yeah, there you least, go. At least that much money. Here we go. You will often hear the camshaft dubbed the heart or brain of a performance engine. One of the main reasons for this is the dramatic effect the valve timing events have on a four-stroke internal combustion engine. Our goal is to show the effect of each valve event and how you can tailor these to the requirements of your engine. Let's begin with intake opening where overlap begins, which is very critical to vacuum, throttle response, emissions, and gas mileage. The exhaust stroke of the piston has pushed out nearly all of the burned mixture, and as the piston approaches the top, the intake valve opens, starting a siphon effect through the chamber. This occurs at the end of the exhaust stroke. <laughs> intake closing is the most important valve event. The piston goes all the way to the bottom, and as it starts back up, the intake valve rushes to the seat. The closing point of the intake valve will determine where the cylinder <laughs> begins to build pressure, as we are now into the compression stroke. Earlier intake closings will trap more air in the chamber at low speeds, making better low RPM torque. Later intake closings give the air more time to enter the chamber at higher RPM. Thus far, we have discussed the intake valve events. We will now move on to the exhaust side. Exhaust opening occurs near the middle of the power stroke, after the spark plug is fired and the flame front has expanded, pushing the piston downward. Once the exhaust valve is open, the exhaust begins exiting the chamber and cylinder pressure drops rapidly. The combustion pressure is now used to force the burned mixture out of the exhaust. During the exhaust stroke, the remaining exhaust gases will be pushed out by the piston, making room for the next charge of the air-gas mixture. The later the exhaust opens, the more low RPM torque you gain by lengthening the power stroke. 
The earlier the exhaust opens, the more the power curve will carry past the point of peak horsepower. Due to both reduced exhaust pumping losses and the exhaust having more time to free itself of the chamber. The exhaust valve begins to close just after the piston starts downward. Meanwhile, the intake valve is opening quickly. This is called the intake stroke where the engine breathes in and fills itself with another charge of air-fuel mixture. This action begins the cycle again. Finally, we will discuss overlap. During this period, both valves are open, allowing the intake and exhaust systems to affect one another. This is called overlap. Here, the intake and exhaust systems communicate, resulting in a complex system where small changes on one side can greatly affect the other. An engine's overlap requirements are highly dependent on the design of the combustion chamber, air inlet, and exhaust systems. Once the piston passes through top dead center and starts back down, the intake charge is pulled in quickly so the exhaust valve must close at exactly the right point to keep burned gas from re-entering while not allowing too much of the good inlet charge to escape with the exhaust. We hope you now have a better understanding of your engine's cam timing. <laughs> what <laughs> the fuck <laughs> was that? Dude, seriously, Siri, oh, Siri, tell relax. me about it. Relax. <laughs> relax. That's it. Just relax. What relaxing just up. happened? Because I don't understand <laughs> any of that, Oscar. That gal was really weird sounding, but she did a good job. Oh, she really did. But she was. My really mind creepy. is mush, big Your daddy. mind is mush, but my pants are full. That's what this episode's about is, what the fuck is that about? And should <laughs> you get a cam? <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and now, straight from the Law Abiding Biker Media Studio. <laughs> Out of sunny Yakima, Washington. We bring you another episode of the number one listen to motorcycle podcast. We're in your head. 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 Oscar, I don't even have a clue what that chick said, <laughs> but I want to kind of. She talk sounded like hot, mm -hmm. and she was talking about seats and. <laughs> well, she could talk about gas and too. strokes. I don't know oh, why yeah, that turned the gas. Part. <laughs> oh my god! And I know our audience; their their brains are fried listening to that. So we got Oscar in the house. We got Big Daddy in the house these guys are a wealth of knowledge and we're going to break it down what you need to know out there as an average everyday law-abiding biker we're not going to get too crazy technical on this so but this is an introduction an introduction to cams and what it means for you and whether you should get it and uh whether it causes damage to your motor and everything in between I got the two guys that I wanted on the sofa it's been a while since I had both of them in the house with me but they're right here and I get to bounce questions off him because honestly, I know enough to be really dangerous with this shit. <laughs> oh yeah, once you've had Rick Rack, you'll never go back to Ultimate Motorcycle Luggage Rack Solution. Forget those messy straps and bungee cords. Go strapless mm -hmm, with the Rick Rack Quick Attach Luggage System and Quality Bag. Head over to lawbuddingbiker.com forward slash store. Get hooked up now. Hey, Bikeaholic, Zero 3D has a wide variety of innovative products for your Harley-Davidson motorcycle, affordable chrome lighting and comfort products. These guys ride, yep, that's right, they support riders just like you. Head over to lawbuddingbiker.com forward slash store, check out our full line of Zero 3D products. What do you say, Oscar, shall we do this thing? Let's get her done. Mm, we're into it deep already. <laughs> she was into it deep. That chick. That's all I'm saying. Her Big voice. Daddy. Mm, she's so the camshaft. Mm, and I'm like, I can't stop listening. And the seat. I, I heard you chuckle on the whole way through. <laughs> the power stroke. Perv. <laughs> A little bit. Yeah. Welcome back, you freaking bike -holics. This is the podcast for the motorcycle majority. The Big MM, also known as the 99%. Large and in charge of the motorcycle scene more than any time in biker history. By listening to this very podcast, you're part of what we call the biker. Revolution. Nice. That's right. We do have just one question before we get started. What are you waiting for, Bikeaholics? Oscar. I was actually thinking Go about ahead, the cookie. I was thinking about the cookie. Go ahead, Rick. Mount up and let's take you on another wild, fine, crazy, and awesome ride. Wild ass ride with that chick, dude. I'll straight she'll take you on a wild ride, dude. I could listen to her voice all fine. Freaking nice. It was kind of strange. It was a train wreck. Right I'm going to call stop. her Victoria. I don't know, but she's... I'm going to call her Victoria. She sounded hot. 
But she's probably a 350 pound gal behind a microphone. But it doesn't matter. But in my mind, head. Yeah, yeah. Gonna call her up. I'm gonna dial her digits. Everybody knows I wanna give her this. Oh, I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> you were on a roll though. I lost it. Sorry. I'm time usually pretty good. I lost it. I was trying to, I, I'm gonna give her, I want her digits. And then I was trying to think how I could work like my fingers into it and it didn't rhyme. So I lost it. I'm a loser. No, that's all right. That's your first time that you've, uh, that you've ever failed. That wasn't very smooth operator. And you, you just, you come up with it on the fly, dude. So that's the first time that you've ever failed. But that we, was a failure of epic proportions. Epic. Unacceptable. It was epic. An epic fail. Oh, that's right. We have Big Daddy on the sofa. Of course, I told you he's here to ask, answer some questions. And then, of course, Oscar. You all know him. One of our awesome, underpaid, overworked, just like Big Daddy, just like Oscar, one of our technical advisors. But I did eat on the six show. cookies. He did eat six cookies and about a whole family size pizza. That's fine. Meat pizza on top oh, yeah. of it. Um, <laughs> meat pizza. I don't know how to take that. We're right off. I mean, at least it wasn't a meat stick. Oh, yeah. That um, would have been different. Awkward. We're right off the heels of a live patron only uh, private uh, 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 live broadcast. So that was fun. And uh, now we are just doing like old school, like a regular only recorded podcast. So it's kind of fun to take it back a little bit because lately a lot of stuff has just been live. Um, today's episode is definitely all about cams and as i mentioned you know what is it all about and whether you should get one guys because i know a lot of you have questions i do want to announce one free video before we get started we always try to announce these this new free video on our youtube channel is how to install harley wireless headset interface module that's the whim that's a new bluetooth module that basically takes harley's f up and uh, for a large sum of money, you too can have what the boombox should have had in the first place, the Harley Boombox Infotainment <laughs> System. It should have had wireless Bluetooth connectivity to a headset. It didn't. And so because it didn't and because Harley effed up, they want to now charge you the Harley tax. And uh, they want you to spend a lot of money to fix their problem so that you can connect finally your headset to your boombox. Although they're not actually connecting it to your boombox because it's just an add-on. It's a hack. It's a workaround. It works. It works. Anyways, we got so many requests on it um, that I ended up purchasing one and I purchased the Senna 20S Evo headset that comes with uh, or, or that, that has the Hardy stamp on it. Now, one thing I want to say real quick before the video, it's all on our YouTube channel. You really need to follow that on this kind of stuff, guys, because I don't put all this stuff out on podcast. Um, the only way you're going to get stereo sound with your boombox in a headset is if you buy the Hardy stamped Evo, the 20S Evo, uh, Evo headset. Um, if you, the, the whim added to the boom box, yes, it will have connectivity to other Bluetooth headsets, such as the regular Senna 20 S and other like the, the, the 10 H and, uh, even some Cardo stuff, but absolutely you will get mono sound. It sounds like shit. And uh, the only way you're going to get stereo is if you not only buy the whim to correct their problem, but then buy their headset to correct the problem. And, uh, you'll see some of my YouTube videos as, uh, not too kind to Harley on that little debacle, but we did buy one. We wanted to show you how to install it. Cause there are some of you that it's a viable option. Some of you are loaded and uh, you just want to buy that stuff. And I get it. It does have some cool stuff. Um, watch this video to learn about it. I'm not going to get into it any deeper than that. Lawbindingbiker.com forward slash whim hyphen install. It'll be in the show notes, uh, for whatever episode lawbindingbiker.com forward slash whatever episode number this is. And that is a completely free video. Literally, we were not going to get a whim. I literally purchased one for you guys because we had so many requests. You wanted us to do a video educating you about it, what the pros, what the cons were, and of course, how to install it. So at least if you have to pay the hardy tax and you have to pay well over a grand for the headset and oh, the whim. Cow. Oh yeah. For the headset and the whim, um, at least we can save you some money and uh, with our free video and show you how to install it. So that's what we do for you guys here. We take on those requests and uh, we take care of you that way. This episode also brought to you by the following patrons. Go ahead, Justin. Gus Navarro of Iron Station, North Carolina. James Hess of Palatine, Illinois. And Robert Rossi of Warwick, Rhode Island. And we've got Wayne Walters of Salisbury, North Carolina, and he's a top tier. Peter Weber of Bedford, Nova Scotia, Canada. And Robert Ryan of Groveland, Florida. Keith Bush of New Windsor, Maryland, top tier. Richard Richardson of Binghamton, New York, upped his pledge to a top tier. Awesome. Carlos, Carlos Pegan of Melbourne, Florida. That's right. Nice. 
Lawbindingbiker.com forward slash Patreon, P A T R E O N. Pledge a certain amount, purpose content, no risk to you because you can put a monthly cap, get benefits, t shirts, stickers, private Facebook group, access to live private broadcasts and chat, up to access to our uh, premium for purchase videos. Puts a little fuel in our tank mm-hmm. to get us on down the road. Oh, I got a big yeah. tank right here. Yeah. You should have a big tank. Oh, yeah. Big tank, huge oh, kickstand. You ate. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. Let's get into our main topic. So here we are. Here's the question. Um, and I'm going to, you guys are going to be in charge of this episode a lot. Now, like I said, we're not going to get too technical. The reason is this is an intro. That's how I want to title it. An introduction to cams, um, aftermarket cams, or, or I should say after factory cams, because some are Harley brand cams for your motor. Um, here's the questions at hand. Should I get one? What is a cam, you know, essentially in a basic term, you know, in a basic breakdown, what does it do by getting cams? Does it void my warranty? Does it, uh, uh, you know, do damage to my motor? Will I get life out of it? You know, a lot of people, and honestly, I'm asking as a fool, and I'll tell you that right now, that's, what's great to have me over here because this subject is not at my forefront of knowledge. I know what a cam does. I essentially know what, what it does. I know how the, the combustion engine works, but I don't understand that much, you know, the, the, the total benefits and whether I actually, as an everyday biker want to go out like and get a cam, you know, so you're at a biker event, right? A hogs and dogs or whatever. And a guy goes, Hey, I got a, you know, five fifty two and a half, whatever I'm being facetious cam, you know, that's great. We're not going to get into specs too much. We're going to try to keep this for you guys and what actually, if you want to get into race motors and all that kind of stuff, well, then you're not going to be listening to this episode because you already know way more than what we're going to divulge to you. This is for 90% of the bikers I'm sure out there that buy Harleys and have heard you should get this cam. Dude, get a cam, put your bike, dude, it's extra power, get a cam. And, And you're thinking, I don't know enough about it to whether I should get it or not. Does that make sense about kind of the direction of this episode yeah i I think so well directed and there's a couple from the director you know as we get into it you'll find that there's maybe two to three really simple questions that you ought to ask yourself first before you even get into cams one Mm. one what does a cam do in basic sense it allows you to increase horsepower and torque by the use of an altered cam from stock because remember cams from stock are meant to so that they can meet their epa standards etc so really, by putting a cam in, you're hoping to increase your horsepower and torque. The second question is very simply. Before you do the second, yeah, go do the second question. The second we'll, question is, and this is probably the most important, what are you looking for in your cam? Are you driving a big heavy bagger and you're two up a lot? So you're looking for a lot of low end torque up front nice. from idle up to 4,000 RPMs? Or are you trying to do something like where they have the stage kits where you're looking for a horsepower cam where you're not getting as much torque but now your, your cam's kicking in at 2,500 RPMs up to 5,000 or 6,000 RPMs, depending on how you have your thing rough. And then the third thing is you, you've got to decide whether you want to stick with a chain or gear driven. And the final choice is, do you want a high lift cam or do you want a regular cam? And we can, I'm sure Justin can get into more of that. Cause when you get into high lift cams, now you're talking about replacing your valve springs. You're talking about a lot of head work. Hmm. That was a nice intro. Yeah. Damn, bro. Yeah, you want another fist bump? Dude? I'm Holy giving those shit. Paper. I was like, I'm like, I'm like Frank nice. the Tank in old school when he's doing the deal and, and he's a dummy. Oh, and then all yeah. of a sudden they yeah. ask him a question. He's like, the the economics issues of the worldwide. And all of a sudden then he comes, <laughs> I was in a blackout. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to take notes as fast as you talk. That's exactly what I'm talking about, Oscar. So yeah. good. Um, so here, here's the deal. Let's, in a dumb sense, explain don't get too technical uh you can explain it better than me he said cam so he started out good but what the hell is a cam it's a long rod with lobes on it right <laughs> yeah right okay the, the camshaft controls so the valves there's two val- well valves are at the top of your motor the valves are at the top one's on top intake, of your pistons on, one's intake one's exhaust okay so in whether it's an overhead cam, which means the cams are in the top or like our Harley's twin cams are in the bottom. Actually, all the Harley's, the, the cams are in the bottom. The cam just controls the opening and closing of the valves. Right. So on the Harley's- So easy. rods ride on those lobes as it turns and the lobes are machined at different angles, right? And it right. lifts the rod the push at a rod. certain, the push rod yep. at a certain time to go up 
And yep. those are, if you guys look on the outside of your V-twin motor, you'll see you'll chrome see the tubes. Those are the push rods. Those covers. are your push rods. And so it yep. pushes up yep. and it activates exhaust and intake valves right. at particular times based on the angle of that lobe or how it's machined. Yes. Right. Is that fair? That's, that's, that's yep. my dumb that's, way to yeah, explain no, that's it. All, that's right on the money, buddy. Okay. okay. Yeah. And so that's, so you get more horsepower and torque because you can keep the valves open longer or you can keep them open for longer or you can push them open farther depending mm. on the cam that you want. That's mm. the deal with high lift cams. I like pushing them open longer. Way open longer. Mm. Yeah. Just high, high lift cams are great for performance. High lift cams are great for performance. That's why you have to turn around and redo the, the and spring. And when you say high lift, are you piggybacking off what he said that opens them farther? Yes. Thank you. So a high lift cam, like, I'm really asking, whether it's a car, yeah, whether it's a car, like I put a crane... Um, high lift cam in a in a 350 Chevy small block motor, it it wah, wah, creates more wah, wah, work. Wah, wah. Yeah, that's what it does. It adds it more load. It gets the lope. It gets yeah, the lope. Yeah. Wah, wah. Wah, wah. You and, guys hear those muscle cars? Yeah. But by going to a, a high lift cam, of course, you got to have different valve springs and stuff. But it's keeping it open, like he said. So you there's really a lot of options and variations here, depending on what type of riding you're doing. Okay. Well, let's talk. About, uh, well, so go on. <clears throat> what Rick's talking about is. Um, so I'll, let's talk specifically about the Harley cause the cam designs vary across vehicles. So the cams, the, there's twin cams. We're not, uh, and we are not going to get into the one Oh sevens cause they're just too new. I okay, mean, okay, they've got, they good. went back to a single cam. So we're going to talk about the twin. Oh, cams. right. Yeah. Yeah. They went right. back to a single, single cam. cam. We have twin cams. We have twin cams. So we'll talk about the twin cams. So but, two cams, one right. cam runs the lifters on the front cylinder. Yes. And one cam lives the push rods on, on the, the sec, on the rear. cylinder. Okay. Yep, right. I just want to make sure. So, um, as the push rod pushes up it actually pushes the valve down into the cylinder into the open space right and there's a spring that causes the valve to slam back shut so when the, the combustion happens there's no leaks mm. so that spring mm -hmm. has a certain amount of force so what rick is saying is when you when you go high lift meaning you push the valve in deeper into the um cylinder you gotta push it deeper. you gotta put when you if you're gonna go deeper you gotta have a stiffer spring All right and maybe a taller spring right? that's longer for yes. the better pushing. So you're pushing it in, all, all jokes aside, you're pushing it in deeper? Yes. Why? Um, the, it won't the, seal any better. The, the farther in the valve can go, the more air can flow through. Oh, I see. And so, so if it goes in a little bit farther, and then um, you can have it open for longer or shorter depending on horsepower or torque, that gets complicated. Right. And the dude's making the grinds. That, that's a serious, like... The grinds big, on big the hits. cam. You're yes. talking about the angles of the lopes. Yes, they call it a grind. A grind. Thank you. Thank <clears throat> and you. So the, the that's my definition at Wikipedia. It, yeah. A grind. The grind. The, ang <laughs> okay. the, the angle of the dangle. Or the lobes. <laughs> the shape of the lobes are made by guys with math PhDs and stuff. Because mm -hmm. it, it matters. Yep. It's all about timing. It is it's all precise about... precise timing. Valve timing. Mm. So, the, so that's all it is, is you're allowing more... Um, so, so for the same amount of throttle... So you get your bike out on the road and you're riding around, you're at half throttle and you're going a certain speed at certain RPMs. If you do an upgraded cam at that same throttle and RPM, which is kind of simplistic, you get more air fuel, which means essentially you can get more power, yeah. torque and horsepower. He said it perfectly. The components of power are fuel, energy, and air. Without more air and without more energy, you can't produce more power. That's why the stage one kits, um, what do they do? They add a high flow air filter to bring in more air. Mm -hmm. And then you're, of course, adding an exhaust in order to get that air out more free flowing. The cam is your third component of that, especially in some of these stage two and stage three kits or the Vance and Hines uh, 30 plus horsepower kits, which comes with the cam. You're basically adjusting that to get maximum performance of that air and fuel, which equals power. Okay. So riddle me this, Batman's. Um, and I know the answer, but, um, you know, our Hardy Davidson, when we buy it, okay. From the floor or non modified cams. Okay. Cause like you're talking, we do intakes. We have a lot of videos on that air intakes, um, you know, exhaust and all that kind of stuff. So we're getting more flow, but specifically talking about cams, we buy our new bike. If these cams are so badass, why doesn't Harley just put them in in the beginning. I have an easy answer, but I want to. That's a good. I mean, that is a good question. And I, they, with your bike compared to mine, one year difference, they went to a little bit 
They did different grind. The 103 compared to the 96, well, right? No, oh, well, this the, the year. Yeah, the yeah, 13. Sorry, you're so the, you have the right. high output 103. That's right, the HO. Yeah, and high so output. It, it's like a 250. It's not the 255, but it's close. It's close to a 255. Yeah. Is what I've so been they told, went to a right? more upgraded cam than what I have. So why wouldn't they? Well, emissions, but it's hard to say. Here's what I say. This is what I think the answer is, um, based on my research, is that bike manufacturers, let's just use Harley Davidson in this uh, sense. And I think you alluded to it a little bit earlier is they're making a bike that is good for all ranges. Okay. And that means it's, it's pretty good for takeoff. It's pretty good for higher speed. It's pretty good for torque for passing. It just, it, it starts easy because you run into problems starting your motor with certain high output or, or, or different cams. Um, they're making a cam that is really, it doesn't excel greatly in any one category, but it works well enough for an average rider in all categories. It meets emission standards. And so that's why cars, because people don't want to go out to their Honda pilot and have problems starting in their engine loping, right? Right. right. Because they need it to just start and go. And it's good enough for the average person out there. So that's why these cams are made for the average everyday biker out there it's just gonna run pretty good in all conditions but it's not gonna great run great in any one category because right. by putting certain cams you give up certain things to gain certain things depending True. again right on the type of writing and again this is from a guy that doesn't yeah. know a whole bunch but just from in my mind um that, that that's kind of how it works and so that's why you guys they aren't putting these uh these performance cams out of the shop because a lot of people would complain like it's really hard to start my bike or it backfires sometimes when i start or it lopes like a mother you know um yeah, I, I, I don't i don't think they can you know sell bikes off the floor they want a bike that starts up and and vroom, idles perfect and but there's you know, some there's some there's some of the the zeitgeist that you know the sign of the times and what people are wanting and i don't know if that's entirely true because like i had a 510 cam in my 88 well and then i uh, it went to the 95, but, um, I had no problem starting it. The power was fantastic. I mean, it, and, that, and I don't mean all cams. I'm talking about certain variations. Certain I'm talking ones, about if you go to these other, the hard starting, you know ones. what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, Some, yeah. So you can get crazy with this. You can, and they wouldn't you go to that. the car shows and the guy's like, it chokes and spits and he's trying right. to get it. And then it, dun, 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 cause and it's, it's a just super and, high lift cam. Correct. Cause yeah, they, but they could do better. I, you know, it's like everything else. I mean, grinding cams and matching airflow and stuff costs money. Right. So they find something that's moderate. Well, you know, why would they improve it? Well, they could have gone to a higher lift cam setup and not gone to the 107. But that's the race again is the, the bigger 8. motor. Right. So it, I don't know. It's hard to say. I, I tend to probably agree with you at what they make out of the factory. Generally speaking. Easy yes. to produce. Right. They mass produce it and it works pretty well for everyone. Yeah, and it meets emissions. You guys are, um, you guys are bringing up good points, but you're also forgetting one important thing. Bullshit. Harley Davidson is <laughs> I just want to say th that their income and, of course, obviously right. the support of outside manufacturers mm -hmm. is dependent on part sales. Yeah, true. Yeah. Yes. So if they can sell you something, and then your dealer can turn around and convince you to go with the stage two kit, which has a different cam. The Otherwise, dealer's making right. money off the parts. They Harley a, Davidson right. makes money off the parts. They're making money off the install if you have them do it. So there's a whole other market out there of in, possibility of income. Of it. Yeah, I mean, why true. would you put a stock seat on it when you have the hammock seat? Why right, don't you just right. put the hammock seat on and charge $500 more? Why wouldn't you put a stage one air intake right. and performance exhaust? Right. Because they want, that's good. It's something I didn't even, you're right. It's uh, it's all about uh, selling too. Yeah, yeah. After, look what we can do to your bike. We can give you this much more horsepower right. if you do this cam. And I there are a lot of cams, Oscar. I agree with you. There's a lot of cams that your bike will still run great. Yeah. You'll just have better torque or depending on, you know, what exactly you're, right. you're trying to do, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, I remember my very first time ever doing a cam install was on an Evolution 80 cubic inch. And I went from the stock cam to an Andrews uh, EV27. And I specifically chose that one because it was a zero to 4,000. And it was perfect for riding two up or picking up uh, quick torque to for passing and stuff. And of course, the Evo has the the single cam, but it's you know it it incredibly like Oscar's story here. It made a big difference, 
And so there, there are some advantages to doing it. Again, you what have to cam decide. was that? It was an Andrews EV27. Okay, we want to talk about that a little bit. Well, that's, those are that's an Evo. Evo. Oh, yeah. gotcha, 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 gotcha. But again, Never it goes mind. back to the first yeah. thing that I brought up. What do you want the cam to do? Are you riding around the country touring, and so you need a lot of quick pickup and low-end torque? So you may go with a cam that's zero to uh, four. Th- I mean, you'd be amazed. I was looking at a list of cams just from some of the manufacturers, and you, there's a lot of different variations. There's guys that are going. That's what's so confusing for guys out there, honestly. You well, know what you, I mean? That, but that's why you look at the specs, and it will tell you that its RPM range is 2,500 to 5,000. Or, you know, because I remember when I was looking at putting uh, um, in my uh, 2016, I was looking at putting a stage kit, and I was just going to put in um, the 114. What do you mean by a stage kit for the audience? Okay, so here's the deal. When you first start looking at doing engine modifications, Harley, um, this is for Harley Davidson, other manufacturers have similar setups like fuel moto and stuff. Um, you can do it one of two ways, performance one of two ways. And, and I'm only bringing this up because Justin just said it. You can either A, do it by cubic inches. So you can go from a 103 to a 110 mm-hmm. or a 107 to a 114. And with that, what you're doing is you're increasing the size of your jugs. No, oh, I like big jugs. Mm, and you're putting nice. in, I'm not gonna lie to you. And, yeah, you're, and you're putting in bigger oh, pistons. You're putting in bigger pistons, and that's what you're doing. Right. So, so jugs. you're you're going from a 103 to 110 or 107 to 114. You're doing it with overall size of the motor. Oh. But you can get that same or if not better performance with the 103 by putting in a stage kit with a performance cam. So a stage kit is a cam. Yeah. No, stage kits Harley's name for. Thank you. They, they I take know a the group, answer. I want yeah. you to answer it for they, the audience. So um, it's pretty, and it took me a while too. Harley's, they call them stage kits. So they take the parts and they say, we've picked out these parts mm-hmm. and they're, they all work really well together. So you don't have to go through and buy, oh, do I Mismatch. use that air cleaner? Or do I use that cam with that exhaust? They put them together and they say, this is our stage one or stage two or stage three. And it's just, so whichever stage has more performance parts, like stage three is jugs cam intake exhaust jugs jugs oh or um stage stage what is jugs stage two i think stage three stage three is jugs there's four stages stage one is just air and exhaust right and we all do the stage one yep stage two typically will add a little bit more and the top the top is the stage four hardly has a which is jugs and cams and everything it's 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 a It's full on race bike it's a full on race bike that's like the the vance and heinz 30 plus horsepower they're they're putting together what they think is the complete kit we have that in our store performance yes we've actually sold one yes nice if you want to get the you guys need to look into that i'm going to talk about that rick hang on 30 plus kit because we want to talk about that a little bit, um, a, a, a little bit later in the episode. So, I think you should do this, Ricky. Are you searching for the easiest and quickest detachable luggage system for your motorcycle? Rick Rack has just what you're looking for. Forget all those frustrating straps and bungee cords that come across loose and slap your pain. Rick Rack. Check out one of the Rick Rack's awesome quick attached strapless luggage rack systems. This father and son team designed something really special that you can't find anywhere else. Yep, and these guys ride so they truly understand the needs of bikers. The Rick Rack quickly attached system is a strong, durable, and secure with a lockable system. Also, check out their full line of quality touring bags to accompany your quick detach system. Once you use a Rick Rack, you'll never go back. What are you waiting for, Bikeaholics? Head on over to the Law Abiding Biker Store and check out our full line of Rick Rack systems and bags. LawAbidingBiker.com forward slash store. Rick Rack. Ow. Nicely Rick done. Rick Rack. <laughs> yeah, nice. <laughs> Way to end it, bro. Atta boy. Okay, so, um, yeah, so we're talking about, we'll talk about the 30 plus horsepower kit. Let me try to keep this where we're, yeah. on the right track because you guys are so these two are very knowledgeable and uh, i am not on this subject so i'm trying to think what bikers we need to know um so we talked about stage kits right yeah so let's do you do you have a particular area you want to go right now otherwise i can go ahead if i you say do, i say please. we backtrack to um first of all choose the cam that you want and how do you do that is what type of riding Thank you, you do. Thank you. Thank then you. Then you decide because depending on the manufacturer, because there are a lot of good cams out there. Woods cams are really good. They're made by Andrews Production. Woods. Which is, yeah. Uh-huh. Andrews actually makes the cams and then Woods has them do it to their specifications. 
SNS has cams. There's a lot of good cams out there. So you got to decide what type of writing you're going to do and what works for you. Because if you're touring the country, you don't want a stage three or stage four. You're going to eat fuel. You're you're going to just be burning up. And then and two, a stage four, you're going to limit the life of your motor to about 30,000 miles, right? Before you have to do a we, top end. Well, that's, yeah, but we're getting that. The stage four is well beyond cams. Okay, thank yeah. you. So thank we're, you. if we're just, okay. when we talk about the stage kits, we get you're beyond right. cams. You're right. Let's we just get into whole thing. Good. That's a different thank method. you. Let's, let's so, reel it back into cams. So you pick what type of riding you're going to do. Just a cam. And then you figure out with manufacturers, it's really just deciding what you like to do. I like the Woods cam. I like the Andrews cams. The SNS cams are good. And then you start deciding, especially on twin cams. So Rick, do you want to go chain or gear driven? I want to go down the road. I want my bike to run well <laughs> and I want to pass like a motherfucker. So <laughs> what do I get? I want, when I roll that throttle at about 40 miles an hour to pass some Q-tip, <laughs> as I say that I'm just disrespecting elderly. I'm t- kidding. Well, you're pretty close to elderly anyway. Right. So you're right. Fine. Yeah. I kind of am a Q-tip <laughs> myself almost. Um, but when I want to pass, uh, you know, I, I mean, are these questions, who, who would you ask? these well, questions you got to, got to do the research yourself. Yeah. So here's, so yeah, thank I you, did Oscar. A, I did a bunch of research on cams. Mm, nice. And I know you did. The manufacturers are pretty good about describing uh, what their cams are for. Okay. So if you're and so and let me a, go, who should I go to? What website? Go to S- SNS. I have the SNS 510 and the SNS will tell you all. It, it tells you kind of, you know, you, you ask yourself the questions that Rick just proposed. You go, Hey, I want to, I tour a lot. My wife and I retired and we like to ride and we carry gear and we go for thousands of miles trips. So we need a, something that produces a lot of uh, torque and we, you know, we're not real high tell, speed riders and we're tell, riding a heavy bike. Tell me if you see it here. Oscar, five, sorry, the 510 right there. Okay. So the 510, what yep. does it say? Designed as a bolt-in cam for 88, 95, 96 engines with compression ratios below 9.7 it is primarily intended for use with stock unported heads, bolt in overall. And so if you, if you really, that doesn't make any sense to you because a lot of those um, descriptions. But they'll list the RPM range like that one right. was a 3000 to 5000 RPM. Cam. Me, it means that when you, about the time your, your RPMs get to 3000, you'll really feel the seat of the pants power. You'll go, Oh, and I, and it's true for that cam. I had it. And it, at, at about 3000, actually mine was even better about 2,500. It really, it came on strong. And so um, depending on the cam, so if, if you've got like the 510 from three to 5,000, meaning you'll feel. So that when they say three to 5,000 RPM, RPM, that's where your power range is going to be. Exactly. Is that fair? That's okay. where you, you would get more power with that cam than you would with a stock cam. And it's true. And at about 5,000, it goes roar and you're like, oh, you, you can tell just riding it. The average person, you'd be able to tell that power is over for that cam at 5,000 RPMs. Wow. Okay. So it's pretty cool. So you, you ask those questions, what do I do? And you match up kind of with, so if you don't know, um, higher on the RPM is typically associated with horsepower racing and the lighter bikes and power at the lower end from like 2000 to 4,000. Like drag. <clears throat> that's for big bikes, lower oh. RPMs. You want, if you want the power at the lower end, that's for big bikes power at the higher end, high revving engines. So you, you, you buy a cam, you know, that peaks at like 6,000 from four to six or like my 2013 ultra limited, I buy a cam that goes from two to five because it's heavier. I'm going a little bit slower. I need more power to get it. So going. with a touring bike, like my street glide or your ultra, you're saying get a lower RPM. Yeah, most people go with cams that produce power at lower RPMs than higher. Okay. Gotcha. Makes sense for the takeoff power basically. If, yeah. Right? right. Because you want to get the bike moving a little bit faster. Gotcha. So it, uh, you're improving uh, torque, right? The lower exactly. end cams are about torque, higher end and high lift cams are about horsepower. Exactly. Gotcha. So most of the manufacturer's descriptions are pretty good. If you really don't know from reading it, if you call them and tell them what, like a lot of them, you can put in what bike you have and they'll pop up cams they recommend for you. Nice. You, you can go one step further and all of the cam descriptions will show you intake and exhaust open and close. And so show it here. Yeah. All oh, right there. Uh, yeah. So, um, and then if you want to go th- even a third step and start looking at overlap, that gets more, that's pretty complicated. Um, but there's certain intake and opening and closing ranges for touring bikes for, for torque. And then there's intake opening and closing ranges that are recommended for the lighter bikes that want to go faster, higher horsepower. 
So if you really want to explore that, and I did, and I learned all the ranges, it gives you a lot more flexibility to um, pick a cam. I don't know that we have the time to go into all that. Right. Because it it is, it, I spent like weeks and weeks reading and reading and watching videos and reading and reading, reading. And then I came back to, I ended up with the 510 because it was a good overall cam. The SNS 510. So um, right now the cam manipulates the valves. So if you go high, too high a lift, in order to get the most out of that cam, then you have to modify the head. And so that's when it gets expensive. You get a high, a super high lift cam. You have to have a high flow head, which means you have to have intake and exhaust ports that are either polished or even made larger and have larger valves because you've got a larger. A, a, <laughs> no, I'm tracking. Way, I'm tracking. It, it starts to get ridiculous. Uh, the high I mean, lift cam basically just to reiterate is keeping your valve open longer. Yeah. <sighs> It's pushing the valve in farther. So the, the grind of the cam, you can have a sloped, uh, it, it's a shallow ramp cam, meaning the cam, as the, as the push rod starts on the cam, it's slowly opening the valve, mm-hmm. but it's only opening it to a certain depth. In this case, the 510 is a 0.510 depth. But, so it's opening it slowly, and then it, the ramp closes it slowly. So it's keeping the, valve open longer okay or you can have a steep ramp which makes the valve go open close gotcha so it goes open it, it's open a shorter time but it the time it's actually open is longer because it opens really fast and shuts really fast but that ramp also causes some um clatter on the valve when the valve seats and right. it starts to eat the valve seats away so most people go with a shallower ramp like the 510 a pretty good just standard. Your bike's going to run yes. great. It's yes. just going to have a little more torque at the lower end, right? Yeah, exactly. It's not going to have problems starting. It's not going to lope like and crazy. And you're not going to eat just, valve seats. And right. get, so it's you, a reasonable, yes. those are the type of reasonable cams you guys should exactly. look at out there. Like yep. you're not making a race bike, just get yourself a little more power in the range that you need it, right? Right. And Rick brought up a really good point, which is you need to decide um, if you want high lift or not. Because if you want high lift, then you have to do other modifications. The manufacturer's descriptions will tell you 99% of the time whether or not it's high lift. If they don't, if it's not high lift, then you can just put the cam and push rods in and be done with it. Yeah. Okay. And they make... Thank you. That's it, good info right there. When it comes That's to good info. high lift cams, there's aggressive cams. And then there's also high lift cams that are good everyday average riding cams. And so, but when you start talking high lift, that's when you're talking about... You're, you're talking normally, I'm not saying 100%, but when I did my twin cam with the Woods cam, um, one of the things I did, it was a high lift cam, so I had to redo the, the valve springs, and I, had to, I ordered new heads from Fast Company, and those are polished and ported. So it's, it allowed the What's air, the, ported mean? Ported means, means it's bigger, and polished means that it's smoother, so the air flows out the Crazy valve shit. The, hit a thunk the, you know? in, the valve openings are ported and polished yes right the smoother wow. the smoother it is and that makes it flow fast it's just so yeah. crazy it's you know awesome. it's so technical it really is yeah but you know so you pick whatever style of riding you're doing like the average guy that's going to be touring a lot whether it's with his wife or not he's probably going to go with like a 510 or maybe an like i said i really like the andrews cams or the wood cams and the wood cams are just a special modification to the Andrews cam that he has done. Um, so there's there's those situations there. Then you got to decide, do you want to get rid of the chain and do you want to be gear driven? And there's bonuses and pluses for that. Mm. And, and there's negatives. Like for me, I prefer gear driven. The plus is you get rid of the chain. And, and we all had remember, a past episode on we this. We did, right, yeah. On replacement, yes. And, and I like the gear-driven, and s s makes a fantastic gear-driven cam, and that's I've, I've had that cam before when I had my uh, chain break. Yes. And when I yeah. had to replace it, I went with a gear-driven. Some people don't like the gear-driven because although it's pure mechanical at this point, there's no chain anymore, it is a little noisier. You can right. actually, the gear-driven cams, they're a little noisier, and people who maybe aren't used to them or don't know about them think what's that noise why is my bike so noisy now there there is a little bit of a different sound with the gear with the gear driven but i prefer the gear driven but that you know and for all you out there just so you know your carly comes stock with chain driven cams right and uh, so that's what big daddy's talking about is you can change that out 
And we talked about that 1990. We had to did a past episode. Yeah, Search 90, our site, 96 to 99 to 99 oh, to. I can look at something like that. Yeah. And they rectified it with a um, adjuster. Right. Yeah. They change shoes. And the, you can change the, the gear. Yes. And you change the gears. We talked about that. Yeah. So there's um, quite a bit on that. There's a lot better information on that, on that episode, which we won't go down that rabbit hole on this one, but that's good. I'm glad you brought it up because it does make a difference when you're ordering cams, whether you want to do gear driven, really, I have no problem that you're, you're right. They'll make a little bit more noise, but it's not and, a big deal. Your Hardy makes too. noise anyways. Yeah. They're a little more, the gear driven kits are a little more expensive. Oh yeah. Yeah. And if you, you have to get crank, we don't need to go into crank run out, but it, you have to have a dial gauge and measure crank run, yes. that your crank still true. Yeah. So it gets it's, a little more technical to install because yes, right. otherwise we'd just be doing a cam. Now you got to do yeah. Yeah, a little do, bit more. It's a little bit more, right? Yeah. They have to measure to make sure that you have enough space because if it's worn too much, then you have to stick with the chain. Right. But if it's within specs, you can then go to a gear drive system. And so. Yeah. Nice to know. Good info. That That's, I mean, that's just personal preference. I probably, I would go to a gear drive if I could, but you know, it's, I don't know that there's pros and cons and we we had an episode and we can go on forever um so if you you stay mild cam that's probably the term you'll hear the most is mild mm, cam nice people say oh I'll go with a mild cam like the 510 just look at the numbers and you'll start to see a pattern so when you get it most for the twin cams everything above a 550 to 560 is going to start to be high lift there's some like I think, above what five fifty? Yeah, it's going to start to be a high lift. High lift. Okay, and I th- I'm not sure is a five seventy. Does S and S consider that a high lift? Um, I don't Some know, them. but I can tell you um, through Woods because I'm looking at their numbers. They um, have a theirs are they, set up. They, their numbers are different. Yeah, they're different because they have a five fifty five that's stock, and they right. call it bolt in power for both street and and no heads no head work needs to be done. It's bolt in. But when they go to their high lift, their first high lift is a 590. Yeah, so the numbers for different manufacturers. Five, 575, they call stock. Their 510, which is their version, the TW6. The TW6, I think, is the Andrews uh, variation of it. And then right. they change it for the little bit for the woods. They're running a 510 stock. And they say that's a very strong from idle through 5,500 RPMs. And that's what I always figured I would do. And uh, that way you're strong at idle all the way to 5,500. That's nice. that's your tore up kind of guy. That's nice. Yeah, yeah. that's exactly what I'm yeah. talking about but, right there. And which yeah. one's that? The that, TW6. TW6. From, his from Woods? Woods. It's, it's Andrews Woods. Okay, they're yeah, the same his, company? No. Andrews um, produces cams. Um, Mr. Wood, who's famous being an NHRA drag racer. Is his name really Wood? Yes, yeah, it is. Yeah, actually. Yes, Sweet. it is. Woods cam shaft. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he um, love it. Good for him. He came out with what he called the night prowler cams, mm. and a lot of I'm people. I'm a night cons- prowler myself. A lot of them consider <laughs> your the, right hand doesn't count. Now everybody can argue about their different cams because S and S makes great cams. Woods is kind of like you got a chocolate cake and it's got great frosting, right? But if you got a German chocolate cake, it has a little extra. Mm-hmm. That's what I kind of look at like Woods to. Interesting. Them. But it doesn't mean that they're any better. It's just a different, they do it differently. He wants a little bit different specs as far as what he talked about with the opening and closure rates. Right. It's kind of like, yeah. Anyways, yeah. 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 No, totally. That makes, well, that, that makes good sense. His, yeah. his grinds are a little more aggressive, meaning the ramps are a little steeper. Mm-hmm. All that does is make the, the amount of time the valve is open at its maximum lift. It's, it's open the, the, the longest at maximum lift, but it also slams shut harder. Mm. So that's the biggest difference for woods, a little bit more aggressive ramp. Interesting. And a lot Which of these fun. manufacturers, fun. like Ciro offers a cam they system. Mm-hmm. You know, they're getting it from we have a that major in our store, right? Yes. Yes. Look, we don't have the cams in the store, but put the those re- in there, damn it. No, the reason is because they don't sell it as a whole whole kit. They only sell it as the cam and our customers kind of are looking for complete deals. That's why we offer the Vance and Hines 30 plus horsepower 30 plus because it's an right. entire kit. Um, when you get like the serial cams, you're just getting the cams. Now you got to go out and piece together your, your cam install uh, and I your see. push rod. They offer push rods there too. But where I'm getting at is not only there's manufacturers like that. Vance and Hines offers their own cams. Now I'm, you know, and Vance they're getting and, them made by one of those factories. Yeah. Right? yeah just like their few. white label in it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But Vance and Hines, I mean, you know what you're getting with them because they're about performance. So it right. just depends if you want the name or what you want to do with it. But a lot of these, like if you get the S and S gear drive kit, 
you can buy the entire kit together or you can just get the can't gear drive kit by itself and then you got to go ahead and get the install kit and the easy See, adjust I'm more push like rods. Utah. i want everything that works yeah, together i want the you do just give me the parts that would be yeah and i think that's most of our community right that can get confusing and guys like you no problem guys like me i would come to you and i'd go all right i'm ready Wait. to do cams what should i get just give me a basic kit that gives me more power and i don't want to mismatch i just want shit that works together right i think that's and, the majority of our audience and that's why for the store i i don't i i have a little bit of knowledge but i'm not a uh you know a certified mechanic to where if somebody if i offer the cam and they buy it and then they call me and go, well all i have is cams what do i what else do i need we have a number for sure i don't i don't want to get into <laughs> that type of situation so um, I can tell you one of our patrons bought the Vance and Hines. We can get you the serial kit. stuff if you want it, but yeah, yeah email we us. do. And and we've had some quotes that we've done for, for people. Um, but the Vance and Hines kit was sold to one of our the 30 uh, plus, patrons yeah. and he loves it. Yeah. That's a good kit. And that comes with, um, that's the intake, air intake, air intake, the exhaust, the cams. It's an all in push one rods. push rods. It's, it's a badass kit guys. And honestly, We've talked here at Law Budding Biker Media about doing a complete install video. We actually already have shown you how to do the air intake. We already have a free video on the exhaust. The only video we haven't done is on the cams. And we do have that in the plans. It just keeps getting pushed aside because it's a rather extensive film project and we've had other priority projects. But eventually, we may do that, right? Yeah. Big yeah. Daddy, right? We had yeah. talked about it with you too, Oscar. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. It's not... Technically, it's not what really it, that difficult. Right. I mean, you know, like uh, Jonathan figured it out. He did it. Yeah, yeah Jonathan Hole and one of our patrons did it. Uh -huh. So it's not that big of a deal. You need some specialty tools, but by far and away, the cam... So when you guys are talking about the cam kits, most manufacturers offer the install kit, which gives you all the gaskets and all that crap that you need, and they give you adjustable push rods. The 30 horsepower kit then matches the intake to the exhaust. Right. So... If, <laughs> If you get really OCD, then you're trusting, and I absolutely would trust the engineers from Vance and Hines to go, yeah. they have put together everything that works together perfectly. It doesn't have to be that OCD if you don't want to. I mean, you get intake and exhaust, you can match most mild cams. Okay. Now, if you want to go crazy with the cam, then you're going to have to match it to the intake, like right? bigger intake, poured and polished heads. So that's a whole different deal. Right. That's it's what's nice deal. about the 30 plus, right? Is in our stores, just it, right? Just it's, it's, it's ready it's, to go and it's right. basic and it's going to give you a great performance. Your you're, bike is going to run. You're not going to be a drag racer, but you're going to, and your bike, it's not going right. to um, be, be harsh and you're going to get polished right. and ported and all kinds you of don't, just craziness. Yep. yep. So it's probably uh, cams in general are probably the best bang for your buck. Really? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. See, good to know. Yeah. Because you get, I want to do one. I just haven't. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you, you spend like the stage four kits or let's go stage three kits where you do uh, maybe you go a little bit bigger cubic inch. That stuff runs into the thousands of dollars. I mean, if you do a cam install by yourself, a good gear drive cam install kit is like 900 bucks. Okay. And you, if you can do it yourself, we'll right. have a video for it. That's cheap. And you can really, it really wakes up the bike. Um, and the last thing you gotta remember if you do cams is you have to have a tune for it because the cam changes the valve timing. So you have to let the ECM know how much air needs to with come in. With an EFI tuner, basically. With, an, with some kind of EFI tuner. The good news is um, most of the EFI tuners, either they have a map for it already or they'll get you one. Like the Fuel Pack 3, Vance and Heinz will give it to you, especially yep. if you do a 30 plus kit. They'll be like, this is the map you need, right? Exactly. Exactly. And there's other companies that aren't sponsored by us, but their company actually, when I ordered... Um, a power commander five for my old bike. And then I decided to go, that was before the FP three was out. Um, he referred me to a company called fuel moto. Oh yeah. And fuel yeah. moto. We've will talked about them in the past. Yep. They will actually, you order the kit from them. Oh, they don't want to they, sponsor us. Oh, did I say I'm just teasing? No, <laughs> I'm teasing. I don't know. Yeah. We talked to them in the past. They just it's, didn't. Yeah. Well, but, that's when we were brand new. Yeah. They're good guys. But literally you buy the kit from them. They have the kit set up exactly what you want. And then they have the maps right on their website that you download and run through your power commander five. If you're going to do a PC five, yeah, yeah. Power commander five. And you can do, um, the power vision the same and you can get, uh, the maps from power commander's website and they will, I think now they're trying to catch up and they'll actually make the maps for you. So if you, 
Stick with the... Um, and Vance and Hines will do the same with the and Field they Pack 3 now, which yeah. we love. We're all running the Field Pack 3. Just call right. Vance and Hines support, tell them what you have, and they'll send you the map. And they can send it to your phone, and which is then awesome. you just upload it. No downloading. Wirelessly. It's awesome. Um, but just re- keep that in mind. If you go with some crazy cam, yeah. no company we haven't heard of, you're going to have a hard time finding a map. Now, you can make maps. So when I have my 06, I played with... I had a 510 cam, but I played with the maps with different cams. So it's telling the computer that's getting this much lift, so it needs this much air. And it didn't hurt anything, but I could definitely tell that certain maps were better for the cams I had. So you can get close. Like I ran the 203, um, a, a map for the Screaming Eagle 203 cams for the 510s. And it was I looked at the profiles, and it was really close. I didn't notice a difference. So you know, right. if you do something like that, you can probably match it up, but then... You're going to run the risk of finding someone to help you do that. Um, And there's some technical knowledge involved. So if you go something like the 30 plus horsepower kit, it's easy. There's not much to it. I mean, you know, there's other cams out there and I would probably go with Woods. Do you know what they call their cam in the 30 plus horsepower kit? Is it like a 555 or does it have a number? Uh, Vance and Hines cam. They just, you look at the lift. That's most companies define their cams by the lift. Gotcha. So that people are looking at them, they, you know. That's the first thing you look at because the first decision is high lift or not. Because if you're going to high lift, then you got to make a bunch of other decisions. If you're going stock, pretty simple. You can go with a cam kit. It's no big deal. So definitely okay. awesome, awesome bang. So not all the of them have numbers. That's just kind of what their 510 is. That That's just the... It's just... Well, that's that, what S&S calls it. That's what they call it. Andrews cam. Co- might call it like the EV6. Does that does the 510, though, does that have anything to do with the way it's milled, or is that just their model number? No, for S&S, they... they that's what I'm asking. For S&S, the 510 is a 510 lift cam. Thank you. But for Woods, the 222 doesn't mean shit. Okay, thank you. So it very much... It could, be careful the numbers. It may just, be a model number, it may be the lift. Yeah, oh, the model number may be the lift. Right. Or it may just be a model number. So you so you really got to just look at the cam profile and look at the lift first, like Rick said. And then from there, decide. Read, you know, read the manufacturer's descriptions because, you know, even with certain lifts and ramps, that doesn't necessarily mean it's one kind of cam or another. Gotcha. So the manufacturer will tell you, and they're pretty good. I mean, I read a bunch of them and and they're all pretty close, so that's the way to go. What do you call it? A good mid, um, a mild cam. Mild you want cam. a mild. So if you have an independent, you know, if you go to a Harley dealership, that's a bonus information right there. Yeah, yeah, or an independent mechanic and say, "Hey, this is the bike I have, and I'd like a mild cam." Right. Don't They'll get know. crazy. I mean, I want a yep. mild cam. They'll know, and and then you'll be fine. And, and then, some of them have their preferences. Like, mm-hmm. well, of course, I talked to my guy. Depending on what dealer in Richland is in bed with. Right? No, it, this guy's a drag specialist. He can get everything, but he'll say, "I've installed several of these, and people have really liked them, so mm. I recommend this." I gotta hope we can do an install video eventually. Yeah. Take some specialty tools, but a, a couple. Yeah, a couple specialty tools, but I mean, Jonathan, mm-hmm. he's awesome. he really he did he, did he got it. into it. He didn't do the cam, but he got almost everything else. Oh, that's right. And he just figured. Did he it have out. somebody do the cam part for him? No, he was doing something else. He wasn't even doing cams. He was doing. Um, oh, he did now it's starting to he come was, back to he me. He was screwing around, with, or I don't know, screwing around, but he was doing something else, and then realized he had to take the top end apart, or that he had to take the head off, which that's means he had to cut right. the push rod, or he had to disassemble the push rods. And so then he's like, "Oh, I did most of a cam job." <laughs> right. So, um, that's the, right. Now it's coming back to me. Yeah. So, you know, you can, and in the cam chest is the, um, cam plate and the oil pump. So like if you, um, went with a fueling, fueling makes the cam chest kit. And so they include an upgraded cam plate and an upgraded fuel pump along with push rods. What's a cam plate? <clears throat> the, so the cam, the twin cams are, are pressed into a plate, literally the oil part of it runs oil through it. Um, but that's where they spin. There's bearings and then okay. they're pressed in. Um, and that's what supports them on the side. So it's like side. the tunnel they... Like the what? It, what? Cam plate. I'm trying to visualize. I don't know how you would describe it. it it's just a... It's, it looks like a, a metal plate, right? Like a okay. trauma plate in a vest. Right. Like it's kind of squarish. Yeah, right. But it's got two bearing holes. And there's a bearing pressed in and then the cam presses into the bearing. Oh, okay. And gotcha. then it's, I'm tracking. So it's supported on one side and the oil pump is there. It's stronger and it gives you better oil flow. Right. Nice, nice. If you go up with, if I'm you visualizing go with the, it. Yeah, and Harley sells a, an upgraded uh, cam plate kit. So if you have a 99 to 06, you like I did, you'd probably go with the upgraded um, oil pump and cam plate along with if you do a cam job. Now, if you've got the newer bikes, 07 to 
well, probably even up through mine, 13, that Harley made a lot of nice changes. So okay. I could probably just go straight up with a, a cam and not have to worry about replacing the cam plate and the oil pump. See, like on Chola, I was going to replace Which the Which was cam. your 2001 road cam. Yes, and mm-hmm. I was going to go with a 510, but I was going to put a fueling high flow um, oil kit in it. So nice. I was going to have it to where it, it just, it it's stronger and it provides a little bit more flow. God rest Chola. <laughs> Chola, you oh, did. I miss Chola. We that miss was you, Chola. Uh, unfortunately you burned, burned up on the lift. <laughs> yes, she did. <laughs> I Poor cried Chola. the night I saw you. She went down in a blaze of glory. Oh, <laughs> That's true. <laughs> you know what? Here's a here's a little side story. The we don't insurance do that here. company. We never the insurance get company came stories. and picked up my bikes. So I went over to where Chola was at because Chola was on the lift. All of Chola is gone except for the front rotor and wheel. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> they just picked they, it they up. With, they just picked it up and left it. And so I'm looking. I'm like, damn, that's the front wheel because it was in the chalk. It right, was in the bulldog. Right. That uh, thing is so strong and so good. It kept my wheel in there, even though the bike, the rest of the bike came <laughs> tight off. Tighten lift, tighten chalk right in our store, guys. That's how freaking strong it is. Made it through a fire. My God. Awesome. Now, have I told you guys this little disclosure? I know you guys don't know. I I don't know a lot about cams, but oh, yeah. I'm not going to lie to you. You do now. Off to the side. I've been uh, working really hard late at night. I've been milling my own cam. Oh, mi- oh is you. that what you call that? I've right? been milling my own cam. That's what's and, all uh, over the ceiling. I don't know what I'm going to call it when I'm done. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to call this cam when I'm done, but uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to be high performance, high lift. Oh, yeah. It's going to cause me to do a wheelie. I, actually, every time I ride, I will do a permanent wheelie. It will have so much freaking torque. Can you say it one more time? Wheelie. wheelie. I like saying that. Wheelie. <laughs> I do want to say a quick thanks. That's right. Hey, Bikeaholics, searching for new and exciting motorcycle products. Zero 3D has just what you're looking for. Check out their wide variety of innovative products for Harley Davidson motorcycles. Zero 3D's got your back with chrome lighting comfort products. No modifying, cutting, grinding, or welding for easy installation. That equals less time installing, more time riding. That's right. Zero 3D has a design team with over 40 years experience with a passion for design and innovation. These guys are bikers, care about bikers just like you. They pride themselves on great customer service. That's right. Got a question? Get in touch with them via email, sales at zero 3D.com or give them a call. 715-808-0027. Zero 3D is distributed in the U.S. by drag specialists in Europe by parts Europe and Zodiac and in Asia by Twin Art. Check your local Harley uh, dealership or ask uh, for zero 3D parts. Better yet, help support us. Head over to lawabettingbuyer.com forward slash store. Check out our full line of zero 3D products. Big Daddy Kane and Goat <laughs> is over there to help you <laughs> send them an email guys we have a contact form over on the store the only thing we ask is if they help you out please purchase from them because uh you know the face behind the store and that those guys are busting their ass to help you to make sure you know uh, what you need to know before you purchase products from our stores so you know you, you said mm-hmm. something in their ease of installation that's Wait, one of the part- things we <laughs> Oops. Yeah, this 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 part sponsored by Go <laughs> Goat Boy. Go. Go. Cams aren't good. <laughs> um, I need a cam, cam. <laughs> so uh, we talked about Ridiculous. in that advertisement ease of installation on cams. One of the things you want to look for if you want ease of installation, check to make sure it's a bolt-in cam. Mm. Bolt-in cams you generally are easier installation. Um, meaning that they just fit right in and they're meant to be just God, like stock info. replacement, except for obviously the, the grinds and stuff are different, but that's one of the things you can look also like when I was just looking at the website, um, as Oscar was talking, um, it will say bolt in cam, uh, easy installation. Now easy is compared to like going on with a full on, you know, high lift, et cetera. But that's one of the things you can look for. If you're going to try this on your own, that, stellar information so i'm making a note bolt in cams is what you want they don't literally bolt in it's right. just a phrase it's, it's a that phrase means that means it's it's turnkey kind fits of right, right in i mean oh it, like right in right like it fits in uh, just, like you put it in there and it's in no spit, yeah nothing no i mean it goes jeez oh yeah you just, you oh, just yeah. put in some break-in lube nice and maybe nice I like bearing, if your bearings are tight you know yeah, yeah. yeah. it's some simple yeah. questions that we usually get also um, are they expensive? Okay. Yes, but well, they're the most bang for the buck. 
Yeah. Can I install myself? Yeah, you can. It, it, it takes some knowledge, but the, some of these kits can walk you through them. Does it void my warranty? That's an interesting question. So let's go down that route. That's a, a, that's a way bit. loaded question. It's a way loaded question. Because, we like it loaded around here. Oh, yeah. We like see loaded bitches. Bolton. If you have your Harley Davidson dealer do it when you first buy it, a lot of times that will be included in your factory warranty. No shit. Just like True. if you go from the 107 to the 114 upgrade, if you do it when it's new, it's included in the warranty. If you do it after the fact, like a year or two down the road, what you're dealing with then is the warranty of the mechanics work and the warranty of the part itself. Right. But it doesn't void your warranty. What if I have a five year warranty and I get a cam at year one? Well, okay, but hold by on. By the dealership. This but, is the same thing, loaded question that happens a lot I of like times this. when we're talking about whether adding a new EFI module will void your warranty. Right. And I asked this question specifically. Depends uh, dealership to, to, to dealership. Sh- yeah, but I, right. I'm going to mention Sean Graham down at Rattlesnake. Great guy. Was up front with me because I bought the extended warranty on my bike. And he said, here's the deal. This is the simple deal. Anything you do to your bike that is out that is different from stock. No, it doesn't void your warranty, but they may not cover that. So if you have right. an aftermarket cam put in and then you have a cam issue, they're going to say this isn't covered under the warranty. Right? Your dealership could do that. Yes. Uh, a, a no, lot, that, it, but a lot of dealerships they, they, are saying that with an EFI tuner. And I'll tell you right now, because I've talked to my service writer at my dealership, fuck no, an EFI tuner. They would never even report that to mother. Harley no, Davidson, they would I'm just talking, take care of it. But so we're talking, we're talking, but I agree. Cams if, are a totally different some, deal. That's like, an internal say part. Say like you put an EFI tuner in that's a non, and let's say it, you mess around with it and you screw something up. Right. They have that right. Yes, they always have it. the right. So talk to know your dealership because yeah. my dealership would never do that. So to if me. you turn FYI. around and you turn around and put in buy a cam it's all what and they put report. in a cam, right? And you suddenly now have an issue because your push rod broke. And I agree with a cam. That's an internal part. Yeah, we we can get off track yeah. with air cleaners and exhaust. But let's say if your dealership is voiding your warranty because you put an air cleaner in an exhaust and you didn't have them do it, that's fucked up. Because my dealership would never do that. But no. know your dealership. Yeah, mine, mine, would, mine wouldn't either. Right. But with the cams, cams is totally different, if for yes. some reason the issue with your motor was dr- they could link it yeah, directly right. to the cam or I the agree. push rods or something, they're not going to cover that. I agree that. with that right. part. You're talking about internal components now. Yeah. That's why That's a lot when you have deal. a professional do it, they're going to tell you you have a one-year warranty on the mechanics work. Even and if you did me- it wrong and it broke, at least a mechanic did it. I, I don't know, but they, they will generally warranty their work right. for 90 days to a year, depending on the mechanic. And then they'll, the manufacturer's warranty on the cam and the push rods is different. But if you take that to Harley and say, well, I have an extended service and now my push rods are, I need to replace my push rods because they broke for some reason. The first thing they're going to do is say, okay, well, are the, is it stock? Well, no, I put in an Andrews cam with adjustable push rods. They're going to be like, well, how do we know you had the push rods adjusted correctly? Right. Or more likely, if you did it yourself. Instead of the push rods, let's say right. the, what that would probably most likely be with the lifters. Like a yeah, cracked right. lifter. You yeah. cracked the lifter because you didn't have it adjusted and, right. But you're talking about if you did this yourself. Yes. Not having a dealership mechanic do it. Yeah. That would be different, right? Yeah. Well, no. Well, they'll, they'll, if it's done wrong and something happens or a part fails and it takes out the motor, then it's on you. So even if you take it to the hard dealer, dealership and say, hey, I want to... Uh, 510 S and S. Can you do the work for me? If they do it wrong and something happens, you're just fucked. Like yeah. there's no backing by the dealership at all. No, this, well, is, good to, this is, is good to know. No, We're I already said out. that. I already said that. Yeah. There's well, that's going to be the manufacturer's up. warranty for the part. And then the dealership will usually warranty their service work. But what if you have a five year service warranty when you bought your bike? It's, it's not, this is what cover I need it. to know. Thank it's you. Not cover it, it. So it, they made you it can right. take your, you basically what you guys are saying, and this is awesome because I'm learning right here. So basically if you buy a five year, uh, warranty on your Harley at time of purchase and you pay the $3,500 and then I go down in six months and say, I want an S and S five ten. I'm having my dealer mechanic do it. I'm having the dealership do it. Uh, everything's on the up and up. I'm having my dealership do everything. I just, after six months, voided my $3,500 warranty because if that no, goes bad, no, only, it doesn't only, only, if only Rick. Do you get it. my question? No, I'm yeah, trying, yeah, I'm trying to, you're, that's getting, okay. So here, here's the bottom line. What Rick said is totally true. In your scenario, 
if the dealership did, okay, so you, you need to separate out factory warranty from extended warranty. Right. So I got extended warranty. Okay, five extended years, warranty is six a, months. I'm putting a cam in by the but dealership. But extended warranty is a private company. It's not a Harley. Thing. I get it. Okay. So you, so you have, so Harley puts in the 510 cam and they don't adjust the push rod right. And it bends a push rod and it screws up the valve and takes out a piston, right? Cause it pushes the valve in too far. doesn't close the piston, slaps the valve, eats, eats the valve. The, the extended warranty company could say no. So they probably will. That, well, you have to read the terms of the contract, but oh God, I don't know what the terms are. You probably have to read those before you do that's that. I, that's why I didn't do cams yet. Cause I, I bought Thank that. You. This the is, seat this the, is the kind of information that's solid. This so, is good. But the, but the dealership, when I bought that, the dealership said if I, cause I wanted it for my handlebars, the heated seat. And there was one other thing. Okay. They said, okay, we'll cover since we did this at the time of purchase. Nice. We'll cover everything because we did the work at the time the bike was brand new. So we know everything and, and the warranty company won't have an issue with it because it'll cover everything that came with the bike when we delivered it. Right. But as soon as you go after that, there's a period in that contract that says any repair, any modifications made, I think for mine, it was like three months later or something. Um, anything outside of that could void the warranty for anything affected by the aftermarket part and anything that, so the aftermarket part breaks and any parts it takes out break, then you're aftermarket warranty could be voided for those things. So, cause you put an aftermarket cam in and your uh, swing arm breaks, that doesn't, right. that doesn't void the whole warranty or your stereo goes bad or your front wheel breaks or right. you know, it, that, that stuff's still good. It's just, if you put an aftermarket cam in and something happens with the cam and it takes out the motor, right. they may deny part or Kind of like insurance it. companies. They kind of decide what the fuck they want to do. Well, it's up front. You got to read the contract. Yeah, I know. I get it. That's, I get that's it. why Harley Davidson um, My, is but, really yeah. good about pushing. Um, some dealerships are better than others, but when you buy the extended service contract, one of the first things my guy said is, if you want to do a stage kit or you want to make, do it now, take this 107, 114. If you do it now, yeah, right. it's covered mm. under the five year extended nice. or mine's a three year plus the two manufactured. So it's covered under the manufacturer's warranty and the extended service. Now my extended service contract is through Harley Davidson insurances. I, it's a Harley Davidson extended warranty. That's one of their ways they, they make money. Of right. Course. Right. Yeah. There's yeah, also yeah. aftermarket ones as Correct. well, but, Six months down the road, you punch in a 510 gear drive, and if something goes wrong with it and you take it in, they're going to say, yes, you're under warranty, but this was a result of this, so we're not yeah. covering this. This yeah. is this is it's something gold, to consider. gold information. Yeah, it, it is something to consider. Let's dumb it down even further. You I'm have, pretty dumb. You, dumb have it a, down. you have a 2013 electric glide. You take out, and it's under warranty still. You take out the factory stereo, and you put in a new stereo, Bluetooth stereo in it, and it goes bad. You don't expect them to cover that stereo, right? Right. That, that's right. that's that's a good analogy. That's, that's the a, basic premise. That's a good analogy. I like that. Thank you for that. I think that's helpful to the audience for sure. But that stereo will be covered under the manufacturer's warranty if it's still the within stereo. Their, right. The stereo manufacturer. The stereo. But if it causes if it, other electrical problems in your bike, they're then probably could, not going to cover it because you wired it wrong. Yeah, like you could fry, be, you wire it wrong, say and you that, burn right? it up, or you you short it out. And it's a slippery to, road. Yeah makes a difference whether you want to buy a warranty i guess and um, we've talked about this in the past we can yeah. go down this rabbit. this is good info though really good info uh, i'm always learning and thinking about things it's good to think about these things up front guys before at the time of your purchase do you want to buy a warranty or not and do you want to do the 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 cam upgrade at the time of purchase and bone out another you know however much that would cost yeah it's because it's already expensive buying a bike but if you get it done then it could be covered by warranty if you do it later probably not going to be covered except for the manufacturer's warranty. So those are just good things to chew on. These are all part of a cam upgrade. That's why a lot of guys don't do them. They're a little bit sketchy about them. Right. They're a little bit concerned about them. Um, you know, does it void my warranty? So these are good questions to answer. Does it ruin my motor? You know, we've talked a little bit about that. Um, I uh, think that if it's properly installed, yeah. you get a mild, mild cam. cam, it's not going to uh, uh, prematurely uh, the life of the motor. Right. Is that it, fair? Yeah, no, it'll, if nothing else, it'll, it'll make your bike run better for just as long, if not longer. Okay. I mean, a, a nice, a good mild cam is going to make your bike run strong. It's nice. not going to do anything. Now, when you get into high lift cams with real aggressive ramp profiles and, uh, ported and polished heads and really high compression pistons, cause 
certain cams go with high compression, then the life of your motor starts to decrease. Right. So stick with a mild. Mild cam, yeah, it's going to be, you're going to love it. I there, mean, there's a reason why drag bikes, drag bikes are rebuilt after every race. Exactly. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, because they're just running on the fucking edge. Yeah, of they what, are. What's mechanically possible. Right. Basically, and it's hard on parts. Well, it's all like, high RPM. Right. So, and, I mean. And Justin brought up a good point that. No, he didn't. Uh, Yes, he did. It was a, right. it was a yes, shitty warranty, actually. Well, I just wanted to if you buy the extended <laughs> warranty because you don't know and you've already purchased this and you're not going to cancel it and you're going to keep it, there's a lot of people that will wait until the end of either the manufacturer's warranty yes. or the, the extended. Then they'll do the work. Now, again, this goes back to like my dealer. They told me straight out on my 16. Good info, they good said, info. hey, don't be scared of that because we're going to give you a warranty on our mechanical work and you have the manufacturer's warranty under this but yes it's not going to be covered under your factory or extended warranty so you really got to work with if you're having it installed ask them what is your policy if they tell you it's a 90 day warranty on my work right then i might not do that yeah or but if i've got one year left on my extended service contract and they say i'm going to give you a one-year warranty on my work and Andrews provides a one-year warranty on their cam. Mm. Now you're like, okay, well, what do I got to lose, right? You know? Yeah. So it really just Good depends. Info. I yeah. bought the extended warranty just because I wanted the opportunity. That if it, if I ever broke down out of town, I had the replacement, the towing, the replacement. Right, the hotel room, and the we food, travel, right? Yeah, and we travel so much True. that if, if, if I break down in Utah this year, which I, I don't think would happen, I don't think I'm jinxing myself, but if I did, oh, you're fucked because I haven't no, almost dude, broke down twice. It, no, it won't. But if it did, <laughs> you're screwed. I can call <laughs> Harley Davidson Extended Service. They'll send out a tow truck. They're going to come pick up my bike, take it to the nearest dealership. They're going to put me up in a hotel while you guys are gone and leave me all alone crying in my bed. Okay, <laughs> it's it's going to happen. But at least it's covered. Yeah. But then again, I'm not planning to do a cam upgrade right now. Yeah. Right. I actually like the stock cam in this Milwaukee 8, and I actually like the stock cams Milwaukee in the 103s. Yeah, I know. I, I, I like them. I don't, they were such an improvement when they went to that new. They uh, really were. And what do you say, though, in my 103 is close the high to up. the, the close 555? Yeah. 255. 255? Yeah. Sorry. 255, yeah. It's got a yeah. lot more pickup from it really about 1,000 up to about three. Or so I have, I don't know the specs, but you can tell. That, and that's difference. why I haven't done one. Number one, cause I have a lot of questions like this, but number two, it's just a really solid runner. I'll tell you, you know, what, for though, me, that, I'm like, it, it, do I need, that's another thing. Do I need that much more? Like, like I can keep up with anybody and I don't have any problem on passes. In fact, I'm better than, mo- uh, you know, than, than a lot of people. Um, that, that 510 I had in my 06 pulled hard all the way you, so i rode yours pulled hard and at like 4500 you could feel the cam it was it was done it was like it pulls mm-hmm. but that that 510 you gotta pulled, keep pulling and it'll you gotta better. pull through 5500 you, gotta, 50, you, gotta pull, you, gotta if you don't pull at high rpms right. you get nothing dude well, you, you gotta just pull, pull once, you gotta pull till you get maximum performance right. maximum right. <laughs> this is ridiculous <laughs> so you guys are so immature and here, you do need a new cam so immature. Yeah. when you need head right stuff too but you know the other thing is or you can be like i was with my i bought a brand new 03 100th anniversary and i said yolo and i put the woods cam yolo i turned around and put the adjustable push rods i got the heads from fast company and i went all out knowing that fully it was basically i redid the whole top end with polish and ported heads i knew that the warranty was gone but back then they offered a one-year warranty right and it was at nine months and i was like yolo Let's do it. You know, what's the difference? I like it a lot. You know, we love our patrons. Love our patrons. Want to get you involved. Want to get you in the private Facebook group. Want to get to know you on a personal level more. But if you can't become a patron for whatever reason, we do appreciate our flat donations. We never balk at a flat donation. (laughs) (laughs) Paul Stevens of Marriott, Georgia. Thank you. Peter Clark of Highfield at West Sussex. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Uh, Hanfield, he says, is a large village in the civil parish of Horsham District of West Sussex, England. It lies 33 miles, 53 kilometers south of London. How cool is that, dude? Pretty cool. Straight up. Thomas DeMaio of Savannah, Georgia. Oscar, you want to go? Uh, Michael Hurd of Sun City West. I don't know where that is. He made a substantial donation. And Rex Fox. Uh, no city listed. Michael Matiza of Fort Worth, Texas. LawBindingBiker.com forward slash donate is where they went to make that happen. Puts a little fuel in the law abiding law abiding biker gas tank so we can keep this thing heading on down the road. 
So where do we pick up from there guys? And then we're going to close this out. Um, Oscar, do you have, did you, were you talking about a particular cam? I spent a lot of time researching this and I, I'm going to, when it's time, I think I'm going to settle. If I can do a gear drive, we'll do gear drive. And uh, I settled on the Woods 222. Gear drive, gear drive for Oscar. Okay, good yeah. to know. Woods Because everybody wants to know what Oscar and, yeah. and Rick think, Big Daddy think. Mm-hmm. Wo- the Woods triple two or maybe the, the 222? triple five. Yeah, they're, they're, or they're triple five. Either of those are, I'm leaning towards the 222, but I guess. The 222 depend. or the 555. Those will be it. S and S. No, Woods. Woods. Sorry, sorry. sorry. My bad. So there's, that's great because the audience wants to know what Oscar thinks and they want to know what Big Daddy thinks because you guys are way more educated on this than me. That's a great cam, but I like the SNS 551 gear drive kit. Nice. Both gear drive. Interesting. Yeah. Good. So you'd switch it to gear drive there. You heard it from two guys that know what the fuck they're talking about. Um, so riddle me this guys um, for my, if I'm going to do a cam on my 2014 street glide special with a 103 high output my first gut tells me to go with the the 30 plus horsepower kit from vance and heinz in our store only because i know like it and trust it um i already have the high intake you know uh, right air i already have the the exhaust so all i need to do is the portion of the cams right what right say you on that guys for for me if you I'm straight up asking you right here. Like, what would you say is a good cam if I was going to do it? Should I stick with the Vance and I 30 plus or do something else? I didn't, I'd have to see their profile for their cams. I last I looked at it, we had just gotten in. I don't think they had the cam numbers listed. Mm. If I was had a stock bike and I'm like, I'm ready to go all in. Then I would, the Vance and Heinz kit's perfect. You get right. everything at one time. Yep. Your intake, your air intake, your exhaust, your cams, yeah. everything. I, yeah, I would do it. But if you already bought the parts, like if you already have the intake and exhaust and you don't want to chuck stuff you already spending, you know, then, thousand okay, bucks on. Right. So it's, let's just say, let's say I didn't get the Vance and Heinz. What would be a cam that you would recommend for the, if you can, if you can't, you can't. But if, if you have the knowledge here, all, you know, all the companies all make a mild cam, like the 510, the 222. Andrews has got a bunch and they get a little bit more specific um, for the high output 103. I can't remember what their last cam wasn't the 54. I think it was a 57. Okay. And they have the 57 H and the 57 G I think were the two, but they're all really pretty close. Fueling's got a couple of good ones that I think they're 525 is the one they recommend for our bikes. But most of the cams, most of the mild cams are pretty similar. Okay. I mean, you really start kind of splitting hairs. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So, right. So you're getting down to, yeah, splitting hairs here. Yeah. All the S and S, all their mild cams are awesome. And Woods, most of those cams, those mild cams are going to give me what I need for my touring yeah. store, street glide special, low torque all the way up. Yep. Oh, you want me to scroll up? Yeah. This was a conversation oh, that yeah, we yeah, had yeah. and this was based oh, right. on numbers we were looking at. And, right. and at the time, Justin was talking about the cams. He just spoke about, about the 570 or two, two, the 570 I mentioned, and it is, it's a mid to, to rev limit cam. It's good for 3,200 to 5,200. The reason why I like the 551 is because it's an idle to 4,000. I'm looking for that immediate torque pickup. So if you're two you up. You like it fast and furious. No, it's not faster. It's actually a, a. Oh, it's just torque. It's a slower cam because it's from zero to 4,000. So it's, it's, it's expending all of its power production at idle to 4,000 RPM. So it's for those pickups. Like but you, don't that mean you'll take off faster a, though? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. You yes. have more power for taking. But at 4,000, right. you're done versus the cam he's going to, it's really kicking in at, at a mid range. And that's where you're doing 70 and you need to kick it down to fifth and take off and pass the semi. And there's the traffic's heavy. Me, I'm going to be done at 4,000. He's going to go clear up to 5,500. Who's he? Me. Him. Okay. He's which, gonna with go clear which, up with which cam? The two twenty two or Thank the five seventy. So the so you're going fast, my brain's spinning. So the two twenty two is what you're saying will be that passing yes. more yes. Oh, right. okay. versus mine is like um I'm touring, um, I'm looking for more torque, not only taking off, but if I'm doing two up stuff or heavy touring with a lot of baggage and stuff, it's gonna provide you that more power on roll on up to 4,000 RPM. Nice. Nice. The mid range. The one thing that when I got my 13, the, the big guys are amazing. Bitch was six gears kind of. Uh, and so the woods is a perfect match for the six gear because it gives you, 
you don't have to always downshift the pass. Ah. It gives you a little bit more. I mean, I tour around at like 22 to 2,500 RPMs and that's about when it comes on. So you hit the throttle then and it comes on. Nice. From the start, I don't really. Remember the number one question. What is it you want to do with your cam? Right. If you're doing a lot of touring with a lot of baggage or somebody else, you're going to want a cam that's going to take off at idle up till your your main your probably your heaviest shifting point until you get into the higher gears which is 3500 to 4000 rpm so the 551 for for me right for but us, i tell that, you for but that, there's nothing that wrong scenario. with that other cam it goes back to what do you want right, right. and what I'm is just your trying riding to break it down style for the audience. so yeah. the 551 would be good for that up get going torque um and then the 222 is more for all right you're up to speed a little bit you want to throttle down and pass yeah and and, and, and the that. manufacturer I mean, generally speaking like right Right. They'll tell you zero to four, 25 to 5,200. So you look at that stuff nice. and that's kind of where you find out where you ride. That makes it easy, right? And like, it makes it a lot easier. If it easier. says zero to four, well, that's low end, right? Right. Like, exactly. If it says 25 to four, that's mid range somewhere. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty basic, right? That's yeah. RPM. It so. really is. They make the it makes it simple for me now. They yeah. really do. They make it really easy for us to pick a cam. And then if you want to get, do more research and learn more, then you can really start oh. specking out. You can split hairs. And there's actually a lot of, it's kind of fun because there's a lot of minute differences that can make a difference. Most of us won't know them. Right. But um, you can start matching intake and stuff to the cam and really get a lot of power out of your bike for less than a way less than a stage three kit and keep the same displacement, not have to split the cases. Uh, some of the woods got some. What do you mean by splitting cases? Like if you, you go to, it, a, so you if you go to a 110, <laughs> you have to split the. Um, uh, you got to pay a machinist to split the case so that they can put in the new crankshaft. Yeah, the the um well, the, the bottom end. Shaft. You got to you got to bore out the um crankshaft. Damn Why? it. What's the I can't that's slipping me right now. See? Uh, we get deep in this. I know. You said it. You got to crack the case. A lot of people say that. What yeah, does that mean um, basically uh, quickly? I I'm, it, I'm slip the terminology is slipping my head. Essentially it's not where the quickly, but yeah. Where the crank is housed at the bottom of the motor. Right. You have to split that open and bore it out. Why? Because the cylinders are bigger, and which means the connecting rods and stuff are bigger. So you're talking about bigger jugs now? Yes. Bigger See, now you're talking jugs. about well beyond cams, right? Yes. Well, what I'm saying is for the money, cams are the best oh, okay. bang for your buck. You can get a lot of horsepower and Thank torque you. out of a good cam versus going way up in motor size. I'm tracking which now. Costs, okay. You can take a 103 high output, put a stage three kit in it, and it will outperform uh a 110 gotcha because it's it's refining the motor to specifics that go so like when i was looking at doing the red bike they said well we can take you from the 103 to the 110 which is basically the same cvo motor Mm -hmm. Um, this is what the kit's going to cost and then we're going to have to turn around and we're going to have to we're going to have to crack the cases and do all that work for the same amount of money we can do a stage three kit and you're going to get cams. You're going to get everything. We don't mess with displacement, but we can produce the same amount of torque and horsepower I'm out of tracking. that. And if you look in the Harley Davidson website or catalogs, they'll actually show you, they'll show you yeah, the right. tor- the stock versus stage one. They'll show you stock versus stage two, stage three, stage four. They'll show you what the, the output of the 110 or the now they'll even show you the 114 and you can compare. Harley do, has done a good job of putting that right in your face. You can make the decision. So you can say, okay, well, I'm looking for more power and torque. I want to put a 110 in my 103. And they'll say, yep, we'll sell that to you. But guess what? We're going to have to crack the cases. Versus some dealers will say, is that, is I that, can, if they say they have to crack the cases, that's something you should be scared of. Well, no, no it's no, just no, really I'm expensive. Just, it's really expensive. expensive. Thank you. It's expensive. So Thank for the you. same amount of money or a little bit less, depending on what they're charging you for the install, you can put a stage three kit in and they don't have to take the motor out. They don't have to. Well, I shouldn't say that. They don't have to crack the cases. Right. So and a lot of people say that. That's not so like a stage, yeah, like, right. a stage, oh, expensive. like a stage expensive. three, I think, is cams, heads, adjustable push rods, um, tuned with the... Um, super tuner from you know harley davidson Mm -hmm. it's a whole kit it's an all-in-one kit that they put in but it's all bolt in per se Mm -hmm. i mean okay it's it's the way it goes now you get into like the stage four now they're taking off the usually they'll either replace the heads with the screaming eagle heads which already have the high lift springs in it or they have to take yours 
have it polished and ported and new springs put in. Right. Yeah, okay, whole, good. Heads of machines. That's, that's just actually good because we wanted to do an episode. So we actually covered stage fours, which was a whole nother. Yeah. So that's awesome. Like if you want to get, um, we're talking get well work. beyond cams. Oh, I, I like head work. Yeah, I know. I, I want to get some tonight there. actually, if you got if, a if you, phone uh, number do for me. Head work, <laughs> just to, there's a company in Portland that was going to charge me $1,500. <laughs> they were going to charge me $1,500 to take my stock heads and completely rework them. Oh, wow. And $1,500 uh, $1, for head? That's, that's, I mean, you know, well, she, uh, that's she Bellevue. Wasn't that's of yeah, it's Bellevue. It's fine. Yeah. Just but that's, the, but see, <laughs> these stage kits, you don't have to do all that, depending. If you go to a stage two, you know, I think the stage two is the cam and just the air and, and stuff mm-hmm. like that. But when you start going in more performance, then it means more work, more money, more um, more money, time. more money, more money. Yeah, but basic you can hardly want your money. Yeah, but basic cams are relatively inexpensive. You get the kit, and then whatever you pay somebody to put it in. I okay. paid my 06 was with the gear drive kit was fifteen hundred bucks, and that was and it, it. My bike was a totally different bike. It really woke it up. So totally worth it, huh? Mm-hmm. Versus the then. So I had the 506 valve stem seal leak. So these like we gotta um, rework the heads. We might as well do so. The kit rework the head. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I had leaking. Whoa, Just my going. stem was leaking. I'm um, such a perv. <laughs> so the the kit to do uh, make it from an eighty eight to a ninety five was like two thousand bucks or something. And I got a break on it because it was a Harley deal. But that's, I mean, the cams were cheaper, and I got right. gear drive gear drive cams out of it, which would last longer than the bike. So it's, I mean. Cams is probably one of the best things that you can do. Just, and if, yeah. if you plan ahead a little bit and you get a cam that some cams that the manufacturer will tell you performs best with modified heads, meaning you can take your stock head and it'll be fine. And then later on, you can send your head to a good machine shop and have it poured and polished and it'll be better. So you don't bear the entire expense up front. You can kind of plan oh. it out so that you can do it over the period of time because that can be expensive. I mean, a good machine shop can... Um, and polish your heads depending on the valve diameters and stuff and it's not too expensive that's so, actually good info yeah it's kind of cool it, it, it just takes some forethought but right um once you go to the 110 that's it you have a 110 right. you can't go back to the 103 once you go to the one i don't the 120 the 114 they're all bigger uh cranks so you with cams and maybe some head work you keep your uh 103 which is a little bit cooler running motor and pretty much easy to fix anywhere you go I, I mean, it's that's the only thing I would do. I love my 103, and I'll I'll do cams, and then at nice. some point probably head. So I think I'm going to do that too, cam eventually. And you know, it's always nice to know that when you're ready to have your heads polished. Oh yeah, that you can. Oh, and it's yeah, because you never know when you're going to get that I mean, urge to have your head polished. You know, and you you can go ghetto <laughs> or you can go high end when you get your head polished. <laughs> Just True. depends on how much flow you that want. Comes, <laughs> that comes at different costs. Um, or, or you, whether they have teeth or not, or you can oh. just, or you can just buy new heads. Right. Oh. If you're not happy with the head that you have right now, yeah, you can buy new heads that are already Correct. have that performance for so you. So if you're Correct. dissatisfied with the head you get, you can buy new this heads. Is we are off track. Ridiculous. Okay, <laughs> that was amazing. I don't, so yeah, go ahead. Do we cover everything? I don't know. Well, I don't know if there's something else. We're gonna do a roundhouse round a round table. But I do want to make sure. I'm going to knock you out with a roundhouse kick. (laughs) If I didn't mention something that you think is super important, remember, I think this is, you guys are amazing. And I just say that as as friends, of course, you guys are so knowledgeable. And this is why this episode is pended for over a year because I wanted you to right here. If there's anybody at Law Abiding Biker Media that can sit here and have this conversation and me as the dummy over here, just asking questions because I'm asking the questions that most guys, most guys, a lot of them have an understanding like me but it scares them and they don't quite know. So I think having you guys here and having me ask the questions, I think we answered a lot of uh, uh, misnomers or, or uh, you Myth. know, there's a lot of myths, myths, a lot myths. of myths out there. And just to give a guy's idea, is this something both from a mechanical standpoint, but also does it hurt your engine? What about warranty? And the, the general questions that I never had answered um, you guys really answered here and I hadn't really talked to you guys about it in depth before for this very reason because I wanted to do it live because it helps me ask questions better. So this is going to be an evergreen episode. So let's do, before we do a round table, 
Is there something that you're like, that is something that people really need to know before we do a round table and, and wrap it up? If you have some mechanical knowledge or the desire to research, then consider piecemealing your system together. But if not, buy a kit all put together so that you don't have to worry about that. Because there's some guys that will be like, well, I want the fueling oil pump, but I want the SNS cam. So I'm going to order those parts and then I'm going to get a cam install kit, which is generally your gaskets and everything like that. And your push rods, you can put, you can piecemeal stuff like I did on my, on my hundredth anniversary for the everyday average guy, just buy the entire, they have the easy cam kits. They have the entire thing that you buy and you know that everything's going to work. But if you at a point where you start to understand this stuff and you want to piecemeal, maybe you want something Maybe you don't want to go with, you know, the the SNS push rods, and maybe you want to go with a different type of push rod or something like that. You can do that, but you better you gotta know have your knowledge and stuff. That's why I like the kits that are all put together. They're putting together what they feel take stress off is you. is the complete package. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of take some stress, especially if you don't know a lot. I mean, you can look in the Harley Davidson catalog at the stage three, it lists everything you get, and then you could go and shop and buy whatever you want to match that. You could turn around and get fast company heads or SNS heads, and you could get an Andrews cam or whatever. I mean, you can piecemeal that stuff together, but you got to know what you're looking for. That's why the easy kits are really nice. Nice. Okay. Oscar, before we do a round table, and then we're going to do a round table, anything else that I didn't ask, you're like, that is the average biker would want to know that. I think I've asked the, me personally, I think I've asked the questions that I had. Um, you, you, you will may or may not get better fuel economy. So oh, it depends. Good call. It makes the, See? the bikes a little more efficient. Um, so you get a little more, more power out of the same amount of throttle, right? But you're using a little more fuel and air. So I'm trying to remember on my 06, I think I got a little bit better fuel economy. Enter it. That's a at, good. See, that's something you know. Ask. If I compared it back to stock, so, but that's not always a guarantee. If you already have a little bit higher compression, you will. You'll get better fuel economy because you're putting more fuel air mixture in there. That's how a diesel works. Shoves more fuel and air in there, and it's got a little bit higher compression, so you'll get a little bit better fuel economy. But um, other than that, just plan it ahead. Do some research and plan ahead, and you know, always if you need to, shoot us an email, and we can always answer more specific questions. Yes. And if those guys do, FYI, guys, if you do email us and it's something that you're like, I have a 2014 Street Glide Special and I just want to know your opinion on, you know, what kind of cam I should get. These guys have no problem helping you, but please understand um, there is a consulting. Um, we will uh, at least send some side of uh, consulting fee, basically, um, to help us out because these guys spend a lot of time on this. So um, just probably more in the lines of a flat donation or something you guys can donate to these guys and I'll make sure that they get that um, uh, for their time guys because it, it can get rather involved but we are here to help but that gets a little more technical so we would appreciate that if you send a flat donation yeah, and the last one that and I'll make sure these guys get it directly if Oscar helps you or Big Daddy helps you um, thank them for their help and uh, by that donation and I'll just put in your comments and I'll make sure that they get that yeah go ahead yeah, uh, we did that one time before, and gosh, I spent a while. There was a very specific question. It's a and lot I spent of a while researching it so that the answer we had was like that guy could take that information and go right to he wasn't mechanically inclined right over to the dealer and say, "I want this list of parts. Yes. Here's how to put it in, and here's what I expect." And yeah, it was pretty easy. And that's easy to leave these guys a donation, guys, for their. I'm not the guy to ask on that. One of these guys would be, and you can hit us up anytime at admin at lawbindingbiker.com. And let them know that you want some uh, consulting, but that you'd be willing to pay for it. And uh, I will make sure that 100% of that gets to the guys that helped you on that. Um, Cause I'm not the guy for that. So um, good, good information on the fuel economy and all that. Um, so let's do a round table and wrap it up here. Um, so here's my take, some of the takeaways that I have um, for guys. And this is from a very rudimentary position um, because I learned a lot in this episode. And I thank you guys for that. So, Number one takeaway I have from it is these guys have said over and over from what I heard is that the best bang for your buck for performance is a cam. So if you're going to spend some money and uh, you want to up your performance, to me, what they just told me is 
my money spent on a cam is number one priority uh, for that purpose. And number two is make sure that you get, uh, for the average everyday biker out there, guys, you want to make sure and get a mild, make sure you're looking for mild cams. You don't want some crazy high lift cam. If you want to do that, that's great, but you're well advanced. Um, For us, most of us out here, to make sure that your bike runs optimally and uh, that you don't see a whole bunch of changes other than than, than power, um, so to speak, then let's look at a mild cam. Um, make sure I also heard that the best thing to do would be get a bolt-in cam, basically an uh, uh, easy installation bolt-in cam. Um, I also heard that uh, um, that you want, uh, it might be easier if you don't want uh, to get consulted by one of these two to get a kit, basically the all-in-one inclusive kit so you don't have to do a bunch of research and worry about mix uh, 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 mix matching parts, so to speak. And I will tell you this, if you enjoyed this episode, no matter what, if you're going to get a cam, please, or any kit, number one, if it's a Vance and Heinz 30 plus kit, go directly to our store, lawabidingbiker.com forward slash store. If you do eventually want zero 3D stuff, email Rick, um, rick at lawabidingbiker.com. He can get you hooked up because um, we do sell zero stuff. Um, and, uh, I will tell you, go to our banners page, lawabidingbiker.com forward slash banners, B-A-N-N-E-R-S. All our affiliate banners are there for all the major motorcycle stores. They all have these cams and these kits. And uh, by clicking through any of those banners, no additional cost to you, but we do get a small kick back. If you click through and make a purchase of any cams, any performance items, again, lawabidingbiker.com forward slash banners, bookmark it. And, uh, that way, anytime you go to that bookmark, you know that uh, those banners are helping us because we try to put out, these guys are a wealth of knowledge and they just put out a shitload of information to you guys that hopefully will help you. So Rick, what do you end on? Did I say everything? My opinion there? Yeah, I'm just going to boil it back down to simple things. Decide what you're going to do with the bike, the style of riding you're going to have. After you decide that, choose whether you want a gear drive or chain drive. Mm-hmm. Good. And lastly, everything that I've learned has either been from asking mechanics who do this on a daily basis and what their experience has You're been. A sponge. Me- you mechanics, and Oscar are sponges. Mechanics that I trust. And number and of course my own personal research. But I think it's really important for them to start at the basis. What type of writing am I doing? What am I trying to accomplish by putting this cam in? If it's high performance then that's a different type of cam than what you may be getting in a mild cam that has, uh, and those mild cams have different variations of RPM ranges. And so they're going to do different work for you. So first decide what type of riding you want and what you're wanting to do. And number two, of course, chain or gear. And then from there, start looking at the different ones, go to the different manufacturers, go, go to them and research and see what they have. Almost every single one of them, whether you go to, Andrews or Woods or SNS or even a company like Fuel Moto, when they list all their cams that they offer, they tell you exactly. I was just looking at it uh, about a half hour ago. They tell you exactly what the cam is best used for, what its range is, et cetera. They spell it out for you. And so then you can, that's an easy way to pick that. After that, then it's deciding, okay, do I want to tackle this myself? Am I going to pay somebody to do it? What are the advantage of each or so it really boils down to those four things to me. Nicely done. Big daddy Kane. Oscar. Awesome. You guys hit nail on the head. No, just we make, didn't, but go ahead. Well, the little head. <laughs> little <laughs> nail. Oh yeah. Um, just make sure before you buy anything, make sure you can tune your bike for it. So whatever tuner oh, you have. Nice follow. That's just and that's so before you the in or you know, add it to the cart. Call your tuner nice. and say, hey, do you guys have a map for this? Can you make me one? Because nothing would suck worse than getting a cam in your bike. And then you're like, oh, oh shit. Now I got to buy a new EFI tuner, tuner that can program yeah, that. Right. Or you do need to do that after you do. install it. Yeah. Or or ask the cam manufacturer, hey, do you have a map for, um, you know, the Power Vision or the FP3 or whatever? Pack 3, yeah. And just So just make sure you can find a map and get it on your bike and then you will love it it's worth every penny i'm gonna do it as soon as my extended service contract is up um nice yep worth every penny nice dude that was just a wealth of information and i will tell you if you guys are interested um i wouldn't jump too quick to get a cam i would wait because 
I'm working deep in my laboratory on milling my own cam. <laughs> it's going to be the call, the law abiding biker five fifty five. 4K version. Lightning cam. <laughs> it's the 4K it's version. It's the lightning cam. And it's going to, you're going to be able to do wheelies. And it's it's going to be in every polished. Year. Oh, hand polished. Oh, in fact, I'm he gonna, might be hand polishing I'll right now. Personally, polish it. And it's going to be available in the Law Abiding Biker store. <laughs> and it's going to be called the Lightning Cam. <laughs> you know, if he can. Okay, don't uh, wait for me because that shit ain't happening. <laughs> but uh, if he continues to, he's talking about all the bag stuff we did on the last podcast. Yeah. If he continues to add more and more stuff to his bike, we're going to have to get him a trike, like yeah. an ultra trike. <laughs> so he has a trunk. My bike's got so much shit on it, dude. <laughs> oh, my God, guys. That's awesome. Yeah. That's just awesome. But guys. all of it on there is awesome and it all works. You guys are amazing. That was an awesome. It does. It all. It is all awesome. It all works. Ricky, um, what would you like to do for a call to action? You get to choose here. Tell me which one. Dude, I'm going to tell you right now. My call to action is oh, open it. bug slide. Oh, yeah. Don't ride without the slide. Bikeaholics, bug slide. Absolutely the best wireless motorcycle cleaner on the market. Bug slide. Tried and tested by the law-abiding biker crew and is our number one go-to waterless motorcycle cleaner. Bug slide cleans, shines, degreases while removing bugs and other surface contaminants with ease. Use it on your motorcycle, car, boat, oh, and airplane too, people. Never need to wax again. The release agent in Bug Slide contains a UV filter for added protection. It's free of abrasives and is safe on all non-porous surfaces. Yes, even safe on your Harley denim paint. We believe in it so much, we carry it in stock right now at the Law Abiding Biker store. Head on over to www.lawabidingbikers.com forward slash store. Myself and Goat have it in stock, and we're ready to ship it to you. We love it. In fact, we love it so much that Justin was bug sliding his bike before he was a podcast. Was he using my personal? I, I got into your stash. Bro, were you sorry. in my personal stash of oh, yeah. bug sliding? Oh, yeah. You mofo. You have like 12 bottles. Jesus. I don't even know where you buy that stuff. In 17, oh, in our oh, store. In the store, oh. yes. I went to the store. Right to the store. <laughs> my shelf. Oh, yeah, your shelf. I love it. At least you could bring my AMS oil for my lawn track. Oh, you yeah. Bastard. Oh, it's, it's resting. It's like the fourth time you forgot I know. it, dude. Rick. You guys are amazing. Seriously, thank you. I honestly tell you guys that right here on the podcast. I can't think of two better guys to have on the sofa for this. I think that was a wealth of information. I think it's an evergreen uh, uh, episode. And again, um, thank you guys so much. i um, been planning on doing this. So i got a couple more episodes where I need you two on the sofa about certain things. But Is uh, this the, is this the catch, casting couch? <laughs> it is. It's called, this Whoa. is all about polishing ports and I need oh, you two yeah. on the couch. So uh, Grinding your cam. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. We're out of here. We're out. Peace. Like a trout.